Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about my favorite inventions from Dr. Stone Season 1. In no order of importance, the first one that comes to my mind is the magnet. When he actually put that thing like on a high elevation and lightning struck it to actually get the final result, that was the beginning of a lot. And I don't know if the people in the village or even Senku realized it, but that magnet really led to the, the generator, electricity. I mean, this brought a whole lot to the Dr. Stone world. Like, electricity is a really big deal, and you really can't have electricity and magnetism without a magnet. The process of making permanent magnets is obviously much different now, and to be quite honest, I don't fully understand it myself. It's not really something I wanted to learn, if that makes sense. But I really, really appreciate the fact that Senku found a way to do it in the situation that he was in, because it's just such an amazing leap forward from where they once were. That is, for one, really cool. Um, it's a long shot in that of itself. I do believe that if the lightning did hit it, it would certainly go through the copper coil. Speaking of the copper coil, there is, like, nothing. I mean, you need way more turns, like, to cover that, like, iron rod than what he has here. Like, the, the more turns you have, the more intense of a um, magnetic field you can generate when you put electric current through the copper coil. And there's, there's really not much, but I, I guess if you're... Because the lightning has so much electrical energy and the current level is just out of this world. So I guess like if you have such a huge power source, you don't need as many turns. Uh, but like the way that I've always like done it myself is that you have like you pretty much cover the entire like iron rod in the copper coil to the point where you can't see the iron anymore. And you just need to generate a little bit of current and that will create the magnetic field. The inherent problem with this is that once the current stops flowing through the copper coil that's surrounding the iron rod, your electromagnet is dead. Like, it'll only be magnetic for a few seconds. Like, you need a constant flow of current through that copper to actually continue the use of your electromagnet. And once the lightning dissipates, there's no more current. So I don't know, like, what he plans on doing with that, but it would only be magnetic for a few seconds. <laughs> the second invention and my favorite Dr. Stone scene just ever throughout season one and up season two of what I've seen up till now is when Senku lights up the stone world. That iconic moment when he creates that like light bulb or just a filament from like bamboo and just you see that giant light coming out from space. That that, that was my favorite scene, man, because it's like this is such an amazing, amazing achievement. I I can't underplay enough just how incredible this was. <laughs> That was the coolest, I, that was really, this is my favorite Dr. Stone episode. I mean, that was something amazing. I really am glad that you guys told me to watch this show because I love it. It's so much fun and the science is pretty accurate. I mean, like there hasn't been like a large glaring sort of like anything that's wrong. Just up till this point, everything that we've seen I mean, as far as I can tell you, is real, legit, and accurate. A more futuristic invention, and it has not much use in Senku's stone world, but a tremendous amount of use in ours. There's so much that's got into these things, and I, I, I can't, like, tell you how much we've learned just about the universe and how many inventions have come out of this, but what I think is one of the most significant inventions ever is the telescope. Not just Senku's connection with his father, but this telescope showed humanity so many things that just completely changed our beliefs about the known universe and science, and it created so many fields of study and engineering and, like, NASA. I mean, goodness, there are so many things that came from this telescope. Like, imagine this, right? 
like no longer was people think the earth was flat. Okay, some people still think the earth is flat. Do your thing, whatever. But we learned through this telescope the earth is not flat. And after that, we also figured out, oh, the universe does not revolve around the earth. Some people on this planet still think the universe does revolve around them and, you know, do your thing, whatever. But we figured out so many things, like the sun is the center, everything goes around that guy, and then we have all these other planets around us, and it's like, how do we get there? We have a moon, okay? It's like, we can actually get there. We can see what it looks like. We know all the craters, and like, there's so many things the telescope has brought us, and then we put a telescope in space, like just outside of orbit, right over there. Now we can see even further away, and there are so many things that came out of it. It's, like, this telescope, it's amazing how many things came out of this one invention. Wow, that is beautiful, man. Like, what an amazing gift, especially for someone like Senku. Like, he loves space. Telescopes are magnifying glasses on super steroids. All of them have at least two lenses. There's the objective lens, that's uh, the part facing the sky, and then there's the eyepiece lens, which is the part that you would look through to see the image that's being captured by the objective lens. Just like a magnifying glass, telescopes will use convex lenses, so they focus all the light into one small area. That's why the lens you look through on the telescope, the eyepiece lens, is much smaller than the larger objective lens that's facing space, is because you, what you're seeing is a very large object appear very small and this gives you a much wider field of view. It's also very accurate for them to put the telescope on the highest elevation possible. You, you always want to put telescopes on like the highest elevated surface you can because you're quite literally closer to space uh, than the further you are from the surface of the earth. Let me know in the comments section what your favorite invention from Dr. Stone season one was. And one of the things that I probably should have mentioned but didn't was the invention of soap. Is the reason that Senku is the like, Dr. Stone is because soap actually gave him that name. And it just wasn't as cool to say soap versus electromagnets or the telescope or like a light bulb, it's like, I don't know, soap is like, eh, it's like, it's every way of sanitized, I don't know, it's just not as cool to talk about with respect to the other things that he's invented. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will be making a season two favorite inventions list, but as of the time of this recording, season two is not actually complete yet, and when it does, I'll let you know exactly what I think of it. I already have some ideas of what, like, this certain things that we've already seen in the Stone World Wars is, like, wow, like, I, I don't even know how we came up with some of this stuff, but I will make a whole separate video on that once the season two has come to its conclusion. Thank you all so much for watching, stay fresh, and stay golden.